Rhaenyra comes into power, she could cut off any challenge to her succession. I am to inherit the Iron Throne. She will block my way. Our hearts remain as one. Oh, our hearts were never one. Your character has a moment with her mother where she's talking about the birth chambers being a woman's battleground mm -hmm. or battlefield. Mm -hmm. um, how does that impact your character then in that moment? And then again, later on when you take on the role after her mother's death? I think Rhaenyra is someone who from a very early age is hyper aware of the way in which men and women um, are afforded very different space. Mm. And um, uh, and I think she really fears the incapacity that she sees um, her mum go through in like, in the course of multiple um, uh, pregnancies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's interesting because I think she, I think Rhaenyra feels really, really akin to her uncle Damon. I think she sort of just recognises him as the same stuff, as being made of the same stuff. Mm. And yet simultaneously, um, he's allowed to uh, operate by, complete, by a completely different set of rules. Mm. So I, I, I think, um, I think that um, uh, seeing her mother um, go through uh, pregnancy after pregnancy um, and this uh, advice about this being kind of one's duty as a woman and um, one's like area of battle, um, I think it leads to a feeling of being at odds or feeling at odds with the way that she is read by the world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to be honest, I think she I think she riles against that incapacitation, mm -hmm. and I think she decides really early that she will not be, um, that she will not find herself sort of even li literally bed bound yeah. um, for huge portions of her life. I mean, whether or not she's able to kind of uh, keep that promise yeah. to herself is like another question, but um, I think she seeks masculine freedom yeah. from a really young age. That's interesting. So when she actually is handed succession in your role, you come into that role, do you think those words still play on her? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think it's it's interesting. Again, so um, I think what's really exciting about the series is that within a, a, a world that has a very restricted patriarchy, we suddenly have a woman who will ascend to mm. a position of, or might, may ascend to a position of kind of ultimate power, um, but who has no agency and is mm. in a system that affords her no agency, and those two things are working in opposition. Mm. And simultaneously, if she is to be a ruling queen, uh, she still has the responsibility for heirs, but that's taking place on her body, yeah. um, unlike a, a ruling king. Mm. Um, this, all of these things like um, uh, co complicate, I think, the in, the issue of uh, a patriarchal stru structure and female leadership. I love how careful you're being about what you're saying. <laughs> Everything's so measured. Yes. Um, Olivia, your character, Alison, it's so interesting to see her at this time in her life, where, at the beginning of the first episode, where she's so demure and so mm. nervous. Mm. Um, it's interesting because we know the how she's going to change and what's going to kind of, we kind of know what's going to happen with her. There's some bits in the trailer. Um, what can you tell us about how she changes as you take over the role and why it's so important to see her in that kind of vulnerable state of her life? Well firstly it starts from this intense friendship and love mm. and first love with Rhaenyra and as that relationship fractures that really sets her on a completely different course than one that she expected to go down mm. and then also she realizes slowly over the course of the of the series that she has just been her father's political pawn her whole entire life it's just really crap parenting <laughs> and there's been no one that has that has nurtured her or looked out for her and she's got a keen political interest and she's one of the smartest people in the room mm -hmm and she then begins to come into her power and use that despite her father's indoctrination. Mm. Trying to tread very carefully <laughs> what I say. Um, but then there is that like bubbling repression um, as she's trying to walk this like this moral 
tightrope yeah. and also, you know, have all these instincts that she can't fully, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, expel. Yeah. yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, like there's a scene in the first um, episode where they're in the gardens and there seems to be a closeness between the two of them. And it almost feels like it's going to be romantic, but isn't quite. Mm. Um, do you think in another time, in another space, they could have been more than just friends? I think there's like always like an erotic energy mm. within those intense adolescent friendships. Mm. Um, uh, there's an ownership, there's a jealousy, there's, yeah, your, your role playing at adult exactly. romantic relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so there's always space for that. And, and yeah. But, yeah, but therefore I think it's hard to say. I think, mm. like, I think that, that that kind of, uh, yeah, that like erotic connection at a time when you're trying to work out who and what you are is probably always present, um, regardless of whether it develops. I'm being told to wrap up, but Emily and Millie did such a fantastic mm. job. Quickly, what did you think of their portrayal of your characters? They're beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it was really, yeah, it was it was really touching mm. to watch as well because you say it best. It is like looking at an old photograph of y yourself. Yeah, like sort of um, you know that experience of watching like camcorder footage yeah. of you as a child or home video, where there's an incredible familiarity mm. and you sort of recognise that person and you empathise with that person and you feel yourself to be distinctly different kind mm. of at this mm. point in your life and I really I really felt that when I first saw episode one this kind of uncanny familiarity um, yeah very moving actually your characters are very very careful measured people you don't do anything impulsively like even when Corliss is drinking the wine and he's refuses to drink the wine in court mm. and then when Rain it I always get the name wrong. It's Rainies. Rainies. I know a lot of people do. And I know about tongue twister. <laughs> um when she refuses to get goaded by her cousin by calling her the queen that never was. Oh, yeah. Why are they so careful and measured? What are they preparing for? <laughs> <laughs> um uh, certainly in the uh, in terms of Corliss, I don't know that he is that measured, is he really? He has he has bouts of uh, being impulsive yeah. as the season goes on. I think, again, I'll, I'll speak for Cordis as a part, because mm. you can speak for mm. Rainey's. I think he is good at the politics. Yeah. He just mm. doesn't like the politics. Okay. Mm. I think he just prefers, you know, he's a man of the sea, he's a man of warfare. Mm. And I think he just prefers things like that because in those, spheres, it's very clear, you either do this or you die. There's no nuance, there's no grey. In politics, it's like, I have to pretend to like you to get this, and I don't think that really sits well with him. Okay. Yeah. Mm. What would you say? Well, I think I, w I, I agree with all of that, and I, I think from Rainice's perspective, she's mm. also a really good politician. I mean, yeah. she was very... You know, I, I think temperamentally and also by her sort of training and her background, she would have been a really excellent leader because she yeah. is, she can play the game. Yeah. Um, and I think in the light of the situation at court and the, you know, the, the all of the tensions that are already bubbling and, yeah. and will also continue to <laughs> bubble <laughs> even more. Um, uh, you know, to be able to sort of sail the ship as smoothly as possible is just really important and not to um, allow anybody to see ever what is going on underneath. Yeah. But keeping your cards very close to your chest, I think. It's wow. very, very good at that. Very key. Yeah. So yeah, we answered that without saying anything about I what's know, coming I know, I was waiting <laughs> for you to say yeah. that, but you didn't, you didn't, you didn't fall. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with each other? Because you come across <laughs> as like teammates, which is very unusual for that time period. So mm. can you tell me a bit about their relationship? Uh, um, Okay, I'll begin, <laughs> and then gonna begin? I'm, I'm going to begin. Okay. Um, well, so when we um, first began, we were mm. given, we had a period of time to rehearse, which was unusual in television anyway. Yeah. So we had a chance to obviously meet each other and then go through the scripts and figure out what was what. But yeah. one of the main questions that we both asked of the showrunners, Ryan and Miguel, was this relationship, is it a love match 
or is it was it a political merger or whatever yeah. it was? Mm. And they were both very clear that it was a love match, which pleased me immensely. Um, so from my perspective, um, they are he loves and respects and cherishes his wife. Yeah, mm. he doesn't. I would say he listens to her advice, but not always immediately. Mm. There are you know, not always immediately. Yeah, it's just one of those things where later on down the line he goes, yeah, that, mm. that thing you said. Was... That sounds very normal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, from yeah, from my perspective, they are a team. They are. She is someone that he cherishes, and he really believes mm. she should be on the throne. Mm. So she would make a better monarch than the present incumbent. Now, whether that's entirely because he's all so forward thinking or if it's partly because he's like, well, if she's at the throne, that means I'm a little bit nearer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, but I will yeah, hand the rest of it to you. Yeah, I think that's that's all. I, I concur with all of that. Okay, and um, we, yeah, I think they I think they fight like cats and dogs probably as well. Yeah. Um, there's lots of things that they disagree mm. on <laughs> and certainly things that are going to come up. That, Anything um, you can share? Maybe? Nothing that we're <laughs> <laughs> very crafty. <laughs> Not at liberty to share right okay. now, but um, certainly you know. But so I think that that like any healthy relationship, there's you know there's give and take and you know plenty of rows. But the good thing is that they they make them up, and um, and they probably have a really good love life. Um, That's exciting. Really good bed life. I, <laughs> I imagine we haven't seen it, but I imagine they do. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think they're good. They're partners. Yeah. You know, it's a very equal, it feels like a really equal um, balance between them. It really does. And, and also, I th another thing that it, I, I've always, I always feel about them is that they're very, they're, as individuals, they're very strong, mm. strongly in their skin. She, she's a very strong woman, I mean, very yeah. strongly in her feminine, and he's very strongly in his masculine. Mm. And that makes a very nice, it's a very nice balance. It's completely rare in the world of the Game yeah. of Thrones to have this kind of... Yeah, yeah absolutely, this synergy, this yeah. balance in a relationship. It's yeah. really nice to see. Yeah. Um, so tell me how they both feel when Rhaenyra gets handed succession. How do they really feel? Because we see a little bit in the trailer mm. of what Rhaenys feels. How do they truly feel? I think it's a really, I think it's really tough. Yeah. I think it's really hard to watch because it's... Um, uh, you know, on paper, it's uh, it's a wonderful thing mm. that it's a you know she's a she's a woman she's a young woman, and it's a fantastic um, you know in terms of a progressive move. Yeah. It's I think it's everything that Rainice would support mm. wholeheartedly and absolutely be thrilled for this choice. Um, and I think also that there's a there's a part of her inside that is uh, you know the cuts a little deeper. Yeah, it cuts deeper, and I think it's it's tough to watch. How does and that that's kind of... how that you know how you then balance that yeah. those, that that conflict within yourself is um, is that's the challenge and how to for it not to then turn into something that's bitter mm. um, and to yeah to move forward and and to uh, yeah, to sort of charter the charter this new world in a way that is healthy um, healthy exactly <laughs> and doesn't get toxic um, any way in which that comes through in the later in coming episodes in the coming episodes yeah, what so can I say yeah. um, well I think you we'll, we'll see in in the in episodes to come how um, the dynamic with Rhaenyra is complicated and becomes increasingly complicated and then stuff happens when it just... <laughs> I won't say anymore.